Hey everyone, I'm Mikko and in this video we're gonna learn how to create palettes and how to use them in your painting. And this is a very helpful tutorial for people who are having trouble learning color, because usually the first mistake that everybody does is that they have all the choices in the world and then they pick every color available to them and it's really hard to balance and especially it's really hard to create mood when you just don't limit your options at all. The good thing about palettes is that there is a certain number of swatches that you can use and that limits you to a set amount of colors. And when you don't have infinite amount of selection, it makes it easy to create mood in the painting. And the reason why I these days use a lot more swatches is just because of speed. I've noticed over time that it helps me be more productive uh, because it helps with the speed of the painting, it keeps the consistency, it helps me get to the mood quicker, and even still to this day it limits those easy mistakes, which is picking too many colors. When I'm working without swatches, it, I can still sometimes fall into the trap of like having too many colors to work with and then I'm lost trying to control them all. But when I have a palette, it's easy to get to the mood quickly and understand what the painting is about. And to create a swatch, you usually need to have something that you use to color pick from. I usually use my own photos that I take with my phone and they don't have to be like spectacular photos. Like this, for example, it's not like a great photograph. I just like the mood and the colors and it's the time of day that I find really hard to paint and I'm doing this swatch because I want to learn how to get to this mood on my own without reference material. So making my own swatch is the fastest way for me to learn that. And to start with, this photograph, it doesn't have quite the tone that I'm looking for, so I'm going to switch the hue a little bit. So I'm gonna go to hue and brightness and then just add just the hue a little bit. And this looks weird in a photograph, but I think I can get away with this in a painting. And the thing with photographs, especially if you use your phone to take them, like this one has been taken with a phone, is that they can contain small artifacts, and artifacts are little pixels that are trying to kind of estimate what is happening between two different colors, and sometimes the camera gets it wrong and that can result in artifacts which are these like rainbow colored pixels in between. And to prevent my color picking from having these kind of wrong colors, I'm gonna go back to adjustments and use a very small Gaussian blur. It's gonna be so small that you don't even notice it. I'm gonna do a 0 0.5. It's not even one pixel. Gaussian blur. So it doesn't affect the picture itself, but those small artifacts, this is efficient way to kill those. So we're gonna start creating a palette by going to the color menu and pressing this plus icon. And this creates a new palette. And I'm gonna name this Daylight. Just to remind myself what it is for and I'm gonna save all of these because sometimes when I just want to get to painting I pick a color palette that I like and then I'm easily able to create a mood based on those colors. So now we're gonna get to the part where we actually pick the colors and you just don't randomly pick anything because you're not gonna understand how to use the palette later on. So personally, I use this technique to organize the colors in a way that I have enough information for every hue and local color in the image. So what I do is usually that I pick uh, a dark color, like for this sky. I'm picking a dark color of the sky and then I'm pressing the palette to create a swatch. Then I pick the middle part, create a new swatch by tapping the palette and the lightest part, pick it and add it here. And you notice that they are all next to each other in this gradient. Sometimes if you pick a lot of colors, it can be hard to tell apart what value range or hue range they are in. So if you organize them so that they are in groups in the palette, it's easier to use the whole palette much faster. So for example, now that I'm gonna add a cloud, 
I'm gonna put it here. I'm not gonna put it up there next to the sky because I don't want those two things to be mixed. I want to tell myself that this is a cloud color and not a sky color. And then I'm gonna do a lighter version of that cloud. So for this I'm gonna zoom in and pick that mid-range color. Add it for it. And then the lighter. For the light part, I don't want to pick a white color. And you see that this picture is overexposed and it goes all the way to white. But if I pick a white color, that won't leave me any room for adjustments in the painting process. So you never want to have black colors or white colors in your palette because they will kill the saturation and mood and they will not be able to be adjusted later. So for the light part, I'm gonna pick a very light tone of this cloud, but it's not white. It just looks white in comparison to the other colors. And now I have this palette, but I messed up the placement of these swatches. So I'm gonna press and hold this middle part and then drag it to its right place. You can see that like if you drag colors in between each other, they will like automatically rearrange. I'm so glad that I learned this trick from Procreate's manual, because before I didn't know how to remake a swatch when I messed it up and I ended up making new ones all the time. So this is a lifesaver. Also, one thing that you absolutely have to know is that if you press and hold, and then let go, you will have the option to delete the swatch. So if you pick a color that you don't think is necessary or that is included in your palette that in a way that is useful, just feel free to take it out. Okay, now I have the sky, I have the clouds, few more elements that I want to take out from this uh, swatch or this uh, scenery is the stone colors, the water, and these trees, the green parts of the trees. I'm not gonna say it's foliage because they are not leafy trees. So I'm gonna pick the middle part of this stone, add it here because I know that I'm gonna need more space for this. I'm gonna pick a little bit lighter. I'm gonna zoom in closer. There's a lot of hue variety in here, so I know that I'm gonna need a bit more space for this swatch darker version and then I'm gonna pick somewhere where there is shadow like right here and I think at this point it's good if you go to this view so that you can actually see where the colors are so this is a shadow and this makes more sense as a shadow color as we've learned in the previous video, if you have a warm daylight that has warm light all over the scene, your shadow colors will be cooler. So this makes more sense to pick as a shadow color for this scene, because it keeps the logic of the colors consistent. Now I'm gonna pick a color for the light area where the daylight is shining and I think here is one of the lightest parts and this is a very warm color so I'm gonna put it to the opposite edge. So that is the stone part but I also want to learn to understand how this kind of like pinkish flesh tone salmon color near the water edge works because that's where the rock meets the sea and for some reason the rock has a different hue there and I think that's very interesting and I, that's something that I want to capture in my painting. So I'm gonna pick the middle color, then a shadow color for it. That makes more sense. And then a light part. I'm gonna organize at this point the kind of pink hues under the rock colors because the way that they are sorted in this palette helps me understand what their purpose is in this palette because later they're just gonna be abstract swatches and I won't be having this reference material in front of me. For the sea colors it's kind of different logic because it doesn't really have a local color. 
they're all affected by the air and the distance. So I want to have the few of those like colors from the distance and then kind of like mid-ground colors that are these like dark hues because I'm gonna need to blend them together with the colors that are reflected downwards. And at this point I'm just gonna look at the rock formation and understand that there is no like clear reflection. It's just like a sharp reflection that then dissipates into the ocean. So I'm gonna take a few of these colors from the distance and then I'm gonna move them over here. Give it a little more, bit more space. And then this is not really a color for the sea, but it's in the distance, so I want to keep that. Okay, so that is the furthest part of the scenery, then the water in the distance, and then a few more of these um, foreground water parts. And I'm gonna adjust them in order of from cool to warm, because in the distance the colors get cooler during this time of the day. Now all that is missing is the trees. So I can see that there are two types of trees in this scene. There are leaves that are much warmer than the other ones, and then there are these kind of like cooler, less saturated. And I want to have those two in two different groups to make that separation. So I'm gonna use a rule of trees and then just pick a light color, mid color, and then the dark color. And here I can already see that the dark color is going to be cooler, so that's exactly what I want for that. And then for the foliage, a light color, mid color. Mm, usually a mid color is quite saturated, so I want to pick this very saturated green for it. Notice that by very saturated, I mean right in the middle of the swatch. So you don't want to be going here at any part of this color picking process. So try to stay within this ring in the middle. Okay, dark color for the foliage. And that should be a similar color, but it's much cooler. I'm gonna like, there's so much color variety here, but I'm just gonna do like few color picks and see where that could be. This seems like a good option. Now, for the trees, I see that there is not that much needed because there is such a tiny part of this overall scene. So I'm just gonna pick two colors for those. Usually I recommend picking at least three. One is the middle one that is the local color and then the highlight and then the shadow. Then you have enough information to paint anything with just those. So these barks I'm gonna put uh, on top of each other. I'm gonna search for a good shadow color. And this seems like a good choice because it's clearly a cooler, this sort of desaturated brown. Now I have light and shadow for the trees. And here we have a palette called Daylight. And this is something that I can now use now and forever for painting. So for picking the colors, pick at least three colors. One that is the local color of the surface, one that is the highlight version of that surface, and one shadow color. And make sure that the shadow color and the highlight color are... one of them is cool and one of them is warm. If the light of the day is warm, then it's a warmer color. If it's cool, then it's a cooler color. If there's a cool day and you are picking shadow colors, those shadow colors should be warmer than the highlights on a cool light day. Okay, next I'm gonna do a really quick painting, but before that I want to show you a really quick tip that you can use to create more of these palettes easily. You remember how I adjusted this photograph before I picked the colors, because I thought that these are more pleasant colors that I want to use in a painting. It's not realistic, but it works. So one thing that you can do is take a screenshot of your palette, 
crop it in the screenshot view like this and then use copy then go to the wrench icon and then press add and paste and now you have your palette in your picture so the good thing about colors that are harmonious with each other is the fact that you can go to hue and saturation and slide this to the left and right and you instantly have a different type of palette. And if you want to save time at this phase, you don't even need to create palette. You can just lock this layer and then use it as a palette that you can color pick as you are painting. Like, it's that easy. And these are harmonious colors. As you can see, they fit with each other. You already have all the information for all of those local color, highlight and shadow. And they all follow the same logic of warmer color, cooler shadows or vice versa. And that's an easy way that you can use the palettes that you already have to create like an infinite amount of palettes more. And remember that this is just the starting point. Usually with palettes I paint about 90% of the painting with a palette and then at the end I might go like off script and like add other colors that the painting seems to need. And this is all I have to teach you about palettes. I hope that you find this information useful and let me know if you have used palettes and if you're gonna use this information in your own paintings. I'd love to see what you make. You can tag me on Instagram and I would love to see your own paintings. Okay, I'm Mikko and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!